In this video, learn how you can use TikTok to make six figures in a year. Hello everybody, it's Adrian Brambilla here and you're watching one video in a series of 30 on how to make money online for beginners. I'm actually in Key West, Florida, and in true internet guru fashion, I'm making a video in the ocean on the Caribbean. A dream. I feel like I'm in an image of the four hour work week, which is a book I read 10 years ago that planted the idea in my head that this was possible. Sit on the beach, sit in the ocean, make money, live awesome life. I'll tell you right now, it would get boring if I did this every day, but for now, it's kind of amazing. And I hope one day you can join me. And TikTok is actually the place right now in context. A couple years from now, this video may be irrelevant, but at least right now, if the question I get right now is where should I start? If you're someone who is okay being on camera and is okay with making video content, there's only one platform to basically go all out and that's definitely TikTok. There was one TikTok lesson earlier in this course. This one's a little different. In the previous lesson, we talked about what TikTok is and I kind of didn't give technical aspects of what to do. It was really more based on, hey, you should do TikTok post six times a day because an algorithm is so fresh and new that they're delivering your content at a mass ability that is unheard of right now. Try going viral or building a big audience on Instagram, it's gonna be tough. On TikTok, in 30 days, you can have millions of followers. In the last three days of this video, I've had over 11 million views on my TikTok and 70,000 new followers, so it's still growing and I create business content. I don't usually, you know, I usually have clothes on when I make my videos and that's a joke because uh, when I first was posting videos on TikTok, other business people laughed at me and said it's really a dancing content platform, you're never gonna make it. But here I am, now maybe arguably one of the bigger business influencers on TikTok. One of my other friends, Dr. Brad Klontz and I, uh, who's also another business verified TikTok influencer, um, we know both of us that TikTok has already made a massive impact on our lives and business. And so together we actually created a course. I covered the monetization and marketing side and Brad, who's literally on the phone with TikTok, created more of like the key insights from TikTok and how to grow, how to optimize, and how to create like right hashtags and profile optimization. So in this next part of this video, I'm gonna actually share from our course for free on the best practices on how to grow a TikTok account with the mindset of how to monetize because having a lot of followers, yes, is cool, but how do you make money? And that's kind of my specialty. Hey, it's Dr. Brad. We're back and we're talking best practices. And let's start with watch time. Look, here's the deal. If you want to be successful on TikTok, it all comes down to watch time. You have to get people to watch your video. And so I'm going to show you actually the video that I have that has the best watch time that I have that has the most views. And we'll dive into it a little bit and I'll use it as an example throughout this section when I talk about best practices. So we'll go into my profile, we'll go into my analytics and I'm going to show you what is my best video to date. It's the one I did on study skills. And, and I mean, check out these numbers, 5.3 million views. That's incredible. I, I wish every video of mine had those kind of views. 89,000 shares, 867,000 likes, almost 4,000 comments. This thing was pure gold. And the, the video was about 45 seconds in length. And you can see that my average watch time was 26 seconds. So I wanna just play this video for you so you can get a sense of the structure and maybe you can think about why you think this thing went viral. This study hack is how I became a doctor. If you use it, you're gonna get an A on every test you ever take again. I got a 2.6 my first semester in college. I almost lost my sports scholarship. And then somebody taught me this technique and I got a 4.0 ever since. And it's why I'm a doctor today. This is what you do. First, you take notes. If you're a bad note taker, just borrow someone else's. Then you make a copy of those notes, putting blanks in keywords. Then you mentally try to fill in those blanks, referring to your notes whenever you get stuck. Once you memorize the first line without referring to your notes, you move on to the second. You only fill in the blanks mentally. Then once you memorize that entire page, you move on to the next one. Just keep filling in those blanks mentally until you've finished your entire set of notes. So when you give your commencement speech, make sure to thank Dr. Brad. A few things stand out for me when I look at that video, and it's something that I've studied extensively, obviously. And if you have any video that does really well or the videos that do better than others, I encourage you to actually become a student of those videos. Go figure out what exactly you did, because it matters and it makes sense. So for this one, I gave some 
pr a pretty good hook. And we're going to talk a little bit more about a hook. I also gave some valuable content. That's actually really, really important if you want to get people to watch your video. Um, and then I had a bunch of text in there for some additional information. Uh, and it just, this thing was a big hit. And again, it, I'm pretty stoked about it. So what you'll notice in the rest of this section is I'm going to be talking about some best practices, but they're all going to be related to watch time because it is the most important metric in terms of being able to go viral, getting more views, having more influence, getting more followers. So it's really all about the watch time. So everything I'm about to talk about from here on out is designed to help you create videos that people want to watch and they want to watch all the way through. You got to get to the point fast. In the first one to three seconds, you need to have a hook. You need to give people a reason to stick around to watch the end of this video. Another great way to do this is to actually start with the drama. So if you can imagine a story where there's an introduction, there's some drama, and then there's a resolution. If you can find a way to start with the drama and then back up and go to the intro and then the resolution, that very often really helps. That can be a very powerful technique. And if you want any examples of that, just go watch a movie trailer, pick any movie trailer. They're actually designed to hook you in immediately and then give you a sense of the story. That's a great place to model and learn for some of your video content. The other thing you can do is promise to deliver something and then not deliver it right away. Now you need to be careful about this because you don't want your viewer to feel tricked at all. But for example, if I was to say, you're not gonna believe how much this person spent for this thing. So that's a great place to start with the drama. And then I might back up and, and give the backstory and then at the end of the video, I actually give that number. But let's move on now to the hook. Now, the hook I might suggest to you is the absolute most important part of your video. It's the first one to three seconds. Essentially, you need to tell the viewer why they want to stick around to watch this video. This is critically important. And if you spend any time on the app, you're going to see that you just start scrolling through. And if people don't have a great hook in that first one to three seconds, you don't watch the video. And if you don't watch the video, TikTok is not going to promote that video to a wider audience. So if you are not getting good views on your video, I want you to think about the hook. So your goal with the hook is to make the first few seconds as entertaining as possible. And so the video that I had that had over 5 million views, it had a pretty good hook. I said, this study hack is how I became a doctor. So immediately I'm showing the audience there's value in this. I'm going to be teaching you a study hack. And this study hack was so powerful for me. I became a doctor. And, and by the way, if you're in school, you really should go watch that video because it really is my best study hack. And it is literally how I became a doctor, but I digress. So you want to make those first few seconds as entertaining and as grabbing as possible. So I'll give you a couple examples of what I've seen have done really well in TikTok. You might start with, you're not going to believe and then you give some information about whatever it is you're, you're talking about, or um, this will shock you. That's another great one. Cause I'm like, what's going to shock me ever wonder. And then you give some sort of information or a question that a lot of people can relate to ever wonder why um, where the saying raining cats and dogs come from. Now you've immediately hooked me because I've heard that saying, but I'm like, I don't know where that saying came from. So you get the idea. There's a promised value and you're connecting people immediately. Or if you're not doing this, you're in big trouble, man. That's a great hook too. I'm going to stick around because I don't want to be in trouble. I want to hear what I should be doing. Or for my content, I might say something like, if you're someone who wants to make more money, you need to watch this video. Well, I am someone who wants to make more money. So I'm very interested in what's coming next. Now, obviously the hook is going to be very dependent on your niche. Adrian and I are more on the educational side of TikTok. So we're looking to impart some information. We want people to gather value and take value from our videos. And so we might structure it a little bit differently if you're doing, for example, a comedy channel or a dance channel or entertainment channel. But just remember, if you can't hook people in in the first one to three seconds, you're not going to go anywhere on TikTok. The next best practice is whether you do it in every video, consider putting this in videos, a CTA, a call to action. It's really easy to sort of forget how powerful calls to action are. And you might even feel weird about doing them, but I really encourage you to give them a try. A call to action could be something like, hey, don't forget to like and share. It may sound trite, but when somebody says that in a video I'm watching, if I liked it, I'm like, oh yeah, like, because essentially if I'm being entertained, I want to show the love and it's just a reminder and a cue for me to do that. Or like at the end of my videos, I might say something like follow for more money mindset videos. You could also do a call to action that is strictly text where you have the little plus button plus click to follow for more videos related to this particular niche. So consider a call to action. I remember on one of my videos, I said, um, send me a DM on Instagram if you want more information about investing. And I couldn't believe it. Within a matter of a week, I had 4,000 DMs on Instagram. That's 
how powerful a call to action can be. I want to talk a little bit now about music. I would encourage you to experiment with music. Even if you're creating educational content, try to put some music in there. Sometimes this can be really sort of low volume behind the background and you're speaking over the music. That's very easy to do. There's a little slide on there where you can make the volume lower for the music. So sometimes music in and of itself can help you go viral because certain music is catching on and it, it, you may be catching a trend at the beginning. And so your video can get promoted just because of the music that's in the background or that's even silenced altogether. So I've seen videos that have music, but you can't even hear it, but it's gone viral because of the music that was selected. So where do you find music you want to use? You go to your discover page. You look at your for you page and see what music is being used and what's trending. I want to talk a little bit about lives because lives are an incredibly powerful way for you to grow your channel. Now the culture on lives within TikTok. I think is very different than other channels. So it's entirely different than I think on YouTube and on Instagram. What I've noticed on YouTube and Instagram is a lot of those lives are people delivering content, almost like a video that they're producing, except it's live. TikTok is very, very different. And I was, I was really shocked at this at first, but essentially the culture on TikTok is that lives are an opportunity for your audience to connect with you. And so what you need to be doing in the live is connecting with them. So you need to be responding to comments. And essentially that's what I do with my lives is I'll I'll put up something saying, hey, doing a QA and a on personal finance, for example, and then I'll just wait and I'll look and see who's popping in. And I'll be like, hey, Joe's here. Welcome, Joe. Guys, let me know where you guys are from. And then what they'll do is they'll start asking questions. And then what you do is you respond to those questions. And if you're not engaging with your audience, your lives aren't going to do very well. People are just going to hop off. That's the culture on TikTok. Sometimes people get pretty nervous about doing lives, but actually I found it really, really easy on TikTok and, and the, the audience and the community is really, really supportive. I always do have something to talk about in the back of my mind and, and just in case there's dead silence or there's only three viewers, And but I actually congratulate them. I'm like, hey, there's only three of us here. This is a time for us to really connect. So let me know your questions before other people hop on. That's a way I'll, I'll get people engaged. And it's actually fun with a smaller audience because you can have deeper conversations. Some some people find a lot of value in having a regular scheduled time to go live. And this makes sense. It's almost like a television show where people can put it in their schedule. And so a lot of times people will include their live schedule in their bio. So that's something to consider. Another great time to go live is right after you post a video. What is so fabulous about lives is it drives a lot more viewership. And if you've been on the For You page, you're going to notice that you're flipping through and all of a sudden there's a new creator that you haven't seen before. And whoa, they're live right now. That tells me that the TikTok algorithm is prioritizing people who are going live. So it's a fabulous hack. So go live. I know a lot of creators who have a million followers right now and they were going live every single day for weeks or months and it really helped them grow. If you also have a video that seems to be catching speed and picking up and going viral, that's another great time to go live. You could also include a call to action when you're going live. So I'll have people text me, for example, a question on investing, or you can say, hey, if you're really enjoying this live, just make a comment on my last video. Or you could mention people going to your other channels or a link in your bio. Use that as an opportunity for a call to action. Just remember this, lives on TikTok, they're not a presentation for most people. The culture on TikTok is that this is an opportunity for you to engage with your community. And this leads me to the last thing I wanted to talk about in this section on best practices, and that is community engagement. The beautiful thing about TikTok is the level of engagement. It, you're going to get more comments, more likes, more shares, more discussion than any other platform that I've seen. Just a couple things to be aware of. If, if you're a creator and I see that you have 5,000 followers and you're following no one back, I think that gives out a bad vibe. So you want to make sure that you're following people that that you want your other followers to follow, people you're connected with, people in your niche. And don't be afraid of the competition. This, there, there's, there's so much attention. There's so much to go around. Connect with people in your niche. A really powerful hack for creating a very, very dedicated community is to respond to your comments. And when I say respond to your comments, I mean, respond to all of your comments. So at this point, 
when I'm recording this, I have 250,000 followers. And I'm going to say that I respond to about 90% of the comments. I find it as a great way to connect with my audience. I learn so much from their comments. They give me ideas for videos. And it's an opportunity for me to serve by getting more specific in my responses to people. Another great thing is to respond to other people's videos and comment on other people's videos and, and put in likes. As a creator, you can see who's liking your videos. You can obviously see who's, who's commenting. And the more you put out into the people you follow, the more you're going to get back. So community engagement, the opportunity on TikTok is incredible, but please, you have to engage with your community. So that's it for this section on best practices. We'll see you in the next section. Well, what do you think? At a minimum, you have some pretty sick strategies to go all out on TikTok. And like I said in my previous lesson, how many times should you be posting a day? If you want to take it seriously, three to six times a day. That's just straight up hustle and focus. And now you have the tactics on what to do. So do you think TikTok is something you want to do? Comment below. In fact, comment with your handle and I'll check out your content myself. If you want to get the free resources that come with this course, make sure you go to adrianbrimbilla.com slash 30 days. Otherwise, I want to say thanks for watching. This is Adrian. Peace. When I started my very first side hustle, I was working at a call center making $27,000 a year. If I could pinpoint how I got from then to now, it would definitely be by the power of habit. It's one of the hardest things to create, but once you have it, you feel unstoppable. To help you build it, I've created the Side Hustle Journal, which is a daily journal that will help hold you accountable to working on your side hustle and creating an amazing business and life that you love. Go to adrianbrambilla.com journal to check it out today.